Well, you know, y'all, whenever you finish on a positive note, you, you know, the off season uh, is way better. And that means when you win your bowl game, you have a better off season. And uh, the kids have, you know, stayed real plugged in and worked real hard. And I think they're excited to be out here for 15 days now. You got a new addition to your staff, Hal Mummy. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how that came about, whether he reached out to you, you reached out yeah. to him. Well, I've been trying to hire Hal since the middle 80s. Uh, you know, we we uh, talked, Mouse and I uh, talked with him clear back about Valdosta State days, and so he kind of took a lot of our concepts and, you know, kind of had his own, you know, package and, and uh, uh, added added some things. So tried to hire him a couple years ago. He said yes, and then they extended his contract at McMurray, and so it didn't work out, but, you know, this time it worked out. His version has been referred to as the air raid. How different is his air raid offense and your run and shoot? Well, we, we have all uh, similar concepts, all the concepts this year. You know, uh, we've added uh, a few things. We've changed a few things off of what we've done over the years. And like I said all the time, if you're not kind of staying, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, you know, new every year, you're, you know, you're, you're not, not moving forward. And uh, so we've tweaked a few things and, and uh, certainly Hal's uh, uh, thoughts blend in with what we do pretty good. So uh, I think it'll be a good mesh. If he's the assistant coach for the passing game, Dan Morrison is what, associate head coach yeah, offense? Yeah, I'm not really into, uh, you know, those titles and stuff. They're all coaches. That's what they do. And they know that when they come here. How do you break down the the responsibilities and divvy all that up? Because you've got a lot of coaches on your staff yeah, now. Yeah, well, we're, we're not really, uh, we're doing the same things we've been doing for five years. So it's not, it's not like it's a, uh, you know, a change for anybody. Uh, you just plug guys in where they plug in. It's not, not really a complicated thing. You're going to have Garrett Gilbert now going into a second season. How much change have you seen in him, um, you know, from what you saw last season to this first practice? Well, you know, what I learned last year was he's a real competitive kid. And I think, uh, you know, anytime a, a kid gets to stay in the same system and you don't change, uh, you know, you got a chance to get keep getting better. Um, he got better as the year went on, and uh, he'll be better this year as he, as he steps up. So that'll be good. You know, Neil Bircha moved up to second on the depth chart that y'all put out. What did you see out of him that made him move up? Well, last year he, I wasn't going to play him, basically. Uh, so, he, you know, he's a very good player. I mean, he's a good player. I feel like, he, you know, he'll get his shot to, uh, you know, compete in there, too. Uh, but he's an accurate passer and a very competitive uh, guy and smart. And it looks like he can do everything we want him to do. Talk about the running back situation a little bit and what you want to see out of each of the guys to kind of separate themselves. Well, the biggest thing is, you know, they got to learn how to block first. And, you know, a lot right now is just learning plays and stuff for a couple of the new guys. But we're, we're uh, eventually whoever understands the protection part of it is going to be the guy that plays. What's your biggest concern about the team as you get underway and start to learn, look forward to I think next the biggest year? concern is just, uh, you know, we're pretty, I think we're a lot, we're, we're a lot more talented. Uh, we've got some plays, but they have never played in games. And we redshirted some guys that have really, really uh, uh, size, speed, talent on, on defense. And, you know, until they prove it in the game, uh, you don't know if they're, you know, going to uh, be better than what we, what we had. I think they are, but, you know, you're going to live with some mistakes while you, while you go through that. So that's probably the biggest concern. Two years ago, when you lost the five offensive linemen mm -hmm. to graduation, you, you were able to replace them last year with three seniors. Mm -hmm. This year, you lose them, and you got a lot more young faces coming in, uh, competing for those spots. What are your overall early thoughts about the offensive line? Well, I think uh, you know we're gonna when we add the recruited group coming in this fall, I think we'll have some depth. They're just gonna be young, but we got size and we got got some guys that are pretty talented. And now it's their time to step up, just like it was, you know few years ago for the other guys to step up so you know I, I think that we'll be fine but you know until it's just like the defense until they do the game you just don't know where you are. One of the guys I was working with the line today was uh, Christian Holloway is that going to be a permanent move to the offensive? Uh, you know what uh, yes he's going to be an offensive guy. Uh, he is yeah. He's going to be a tackle or a guard? What? He'll play inside. Inside? Yeah. West Swan now coaching the offensive line. Who's running the running backs? 
Uh, Timmy and Wes. Timmy Chang and Wes. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the job that Kenneth Acker did at wide receiver? I know you're trying to mount this spring today. Uh, yeah, no, Kenneth, I uh, can tell already in one day, he's a natural receiver, but he was in high school too and would have played him there if we had some corners. Uh, kind of like Nate Halverson right now, I think he'll redshirt if he plays corner, but he's got a chance to get on the field as a receiver. Kind of the same situation Hack was in when he came. Could you see Hack playing both ways then? Um, I, I think that he'll be a starting corner next year in the fall, but I tell already he's be one of our better receivers. You talk about Nate Halverson and Deion Sanders Jr. and kind of what, what they bring to the table now. You know, yeah, um, um, Ty Law. Yeah, Ty Law has a hurt hand right now, but you know, uh, Dion looks like he's got some real uh, quickness and elusiveness. Um, and what was the other one? Halverson? Yes. Halverson looks like he's got speed and stuff. He's just, you know, learning the first day at receiver. But, you know, by the end of spring, he'll probably, you know, show up quite a bit because he's got natural, natural gifts. Last year with Garrett Kristich hurt, you had Timmy Chang stepping in at practice and throwing some yeah. extra balls. Now you've got Kristich back, and then you've got uh, the new guy from California, Austin Kent. Mm -hmm. How much does that free up and improve what you're able to do in practice just well, by having it, it more gives arms? You, yeah, more, more balls. You know, guys can catch more balls. Uh, you know, it's it's a learning process for the new quarterbacks, too. But they've spent some time on, on their own kind of trying to learn it. Um, so, you know, we gotta, we'll end up with, it looks like, you know, quite a few quarterbacks before you know, the fall gets here. We've got a couple more that are, that are coming. So, you know, it we'll, definitely helps you. What can you tell us about Austin Kent? What do you like about him? Well, I haven't really watched him a whole lot other than uh, today, just watching him throw against air. It looks like he's a pretty good athlete. Uh, you know, he's, he's uh, got a lot to learn, you know, but we'll evaluate him as we go. Going back to the offensive line real quick, Stavian Lowe is the guy who came in with a lot of hype around him. He had to get in shape last year. Do you think he's about ready to get yeah, it going? Yeah, he's in. He's uh, looks like he's worked hard in the weight room and lost lost the weight. So you know, this spring will be big for him.